My name is Terry McCann. I do quality management and coaching, and I have spent much of the first three or four months of this year, 2014, looking at management of quality and safety of long-term care homes in the Central and Toronto Central Local Health Integration Networks, or LINs. Before I share some of what I have found, let me check with you. Do I presume correctly that you would like to eliminate Ministry of Health inspections for complaints and critical incidents? I have to presume that your answer is yes. At the risk of being simplistic, I'm sure you agree that the most effective way to stop such inspections is to eliminate avoidable critical incidents and increase resident satisfaction levels to where there will not be complaints. One of the most important and common ways that most homes use to improve their metrics around critical incidents and complaints is to achieve accreditation, usually with either Accreditation Canada or CAF Canada. Apart from an assurance to the public of a provider's commitment to quality, you know better than I the many benefits to the provider that come with accreditation. In summary, the benefits fall into three broad categories, resident safety and satisfaction, regulatory satisfaction through compliance, and licensee management and staff satisfaction through improved reputation and branding and a culture of quality. Have a look at this Pareto chart. It shows a weighted annual average of inspection reports for 2012 to 2013 for each of the then 82 homes in Central and Toronto Central Lins. Each blue line represents a long-term care home. The relative length of each line shows the weighted yearly average number of reports for that home. The year 2013 carries twice the weight of 2012. The median point at the halfway mark is 2.2 inspection reports. 15 homes had five or more inspection reports on weighted average. Interestingly, 14 of those 15 are accredited. Of the 16 homes not accredited in March 2014, only two had more inspection reports than the home at the median point. So, not more than half of the homes in these two lens are maximizing the benefits to be gained from all the hard work that they put in to getting accredited. For whatever reasons, the other half or more have not been able to fully utilize their processes and practices to help them achieve compliance in important areas like critical incidents and complaints. When you drive your car, you can avoid being given a ticket for speeding by checking your speedometer and taking your foot off the gas pedal if needed, maybe even touching the brake. You can also be distracted and not look at the speedometer. The mere presence of the speedometer will not guarantee that you keep to the speed limit. You could even have someone in the back seat watching the speedometer and telling you that you're going too fast and still choose to ignore them. You can have Ministry of Health and Long-Term Care inspectors, required organizations, practices or ROPs, accreditation surveys, quality committees, Health Quality Ontario reports, and an annually revised quality improvement plan. But none of these will guarantee compliance to the Act any more than a speedometer because, ultimately, it's up to the driver. Who is the driver in your long-term care home? That's a trick question, isn't it? Because it is not one person but a team of key decision makers and influencers, some from the board of directors, others from the board of management, and probably others as well, like staff who have the respect of their peers. This group of people working together as a team are the influencers with the power to create and nurture a culture of quality in a long-term care home, but only provided they keep an eye on the dashboard and respond appropriately with the pedals. If I am concerned 
with the number of ministry inspections for complaints and critical incidents, then one or more of three things is probably not happening as well as they should. Firstly, are we measuring all the right things? Of course, we are measuring for Kaihai and HQO and our own board meetings, but have we got the metrics in place to red flag the likelihood of an avoidable critical incident, to red flag the likelihood of one or more resident complaints that could trigger an inspection? In the field of quality management, we call this type of metric KPIs, Key Performance Indicators. KPIs are the organization's vital signs, the vital few metrics that report on the health of the organization in living out its mandate from and to society. KPIs should not be confused with the kind of quality indicators that are reported to Health Quality Ontario, such as falls, wounds and restraints, although KPIs will very likely incorporate many of those metrics by distilling them down. Secondly, are we monitoring efficiently? Assuming that we actually do measure those KPIs, are we reporting them with the right frequency to the right people who are best positioned to effect change, change in our processes and change in our culture? Speed cannot be under control without access to the speedometer. Thirdly, are we managing effectively? Assuming that we are reliably measuring and monitoring KPIs, are the process owners and managers sufficiently mandated and empowered, trained and resourced, and held accountable to take the actions necessary to enhance the quality management system and foster a culture of quality to prevent the bad stuff happening? To kickstart a quality management program to produce some urgent returns, not only for the organization, but very importantly, for your residents and their families, I recommend a three-step approach. Step one, like the first steps of the AA 12-step program, acknowledge at all levels of the organization that ministry inspections show that we have problems, and then commit ourselves to tackle them. Senior management must be seen to be giving the lead in a highly visible way promoting the initiative throughout the organization, including staff, boards, resident and family committees. This step works at the level of the heart, the attitude, the organizational culture. Step two is very practical. Identify where we are at highest risk for triggering ministry inspections. Firstly, for potential critical incidents, especially recurring ones, and then with help from the committees, where we are at highest risk for complaints, especially recurring ones. Remember, the status quo is not good enough. Using root cause analysis, again with fresh eyes if it's already been done before, review the processes relevant to these risks with a view to taking preventive action that addresses the root causes. To complete step two, set up appropriate KPIs, measure, monitor and manage, reporting back to senior management. Step three, ensure that documentation control and quality records are squeaky clean. Processes and protocols are up to date with latest revisions. Records are accurate and current. If you have a manual system for transcribing plan of care updates for personal support workers, ensure that there is an effective review and approval process. These three steps go for critical compliance issues that should be easiest to get buy-in for in the organization. Next, we have to cultivate the kind of quality culture that will have its own momentum to drive down non-compliance and seek resident and family satisfaction as the highest goal. A quality culture driven by the organization's vision, mission and quality policy, which need to filter down and be reflected in the day-to-day -day operations of the QMS, the quality management system, 
which must evolve to meet the needs of continuous quality improvement. We will also train a small multidisciplinary team to conduct periodic internal audits under the leadership of the quality manager. This will involve more than simply ticking checkboxes and should expose vulnerability to non-compliance. Audit outcomes and KPIs will be reported regularly to senior management. I have used the expression quality culture numerous times in this presentation. In quality management circles, it is a universally held contention that an organizational culture exuding quality as the way we do things is the differentiator marking a great organization that delights its customers and clients, regardless of whether these be patients, residents, or the general public. Of course, every long-term care home in Ontario is involved in the Ministry of Health and Long-Term Care's province-wide initiative to improve quality through the QIP program and submissions of quality indicators to CAIHI and HQO. But we need to remind ourselves that that quality improvement initiative presumes on long-term care homes and other organizations being in compliance with healthcare laws and regulations. A nursing homes quality committee operating in terms of the province's QIP program will be focusing more on measuring and improving quality of life and health for residents and less on compliance issues that a home might be having under the Long-Term Care Homes Act and regulations. I am available to work with the administrator and quality coordinator in any way that I can bring my skills, training and experience to bear, but especially to help you with tools and processes like root cause analysis and determining preventive actions as we begin to measure essential KPIs, monitor efficiently and manage effectively. My contact information is on this slide. Press pause on the presentation if you need to keep the information on your screen.